Please welcome Judge Faith Jenkins. <laughs> Too so bad our to co-host Ali Landry isn't here because you both are Louisiana pa pageant mm -hmm. title holders. Right. Now you won Miss Louisiana in 2000? 2000. And I remember when Ali won, I was in school and I remember when she won Miss USA because yeah. everyone in the state was talking about oh, it. Yeah. It was awesome. So how yeah, great is that? How did you get into pageants? I mean, obviously you're beautiful, but how well, did you, you know, get into it? You know, I was it? in college. I was in college and I'd applied for a job. I was a resident assistant in the dorm and I'd applied for a hall director position, which you ran the entire dorm instead of a floor. Okay. And I thought for sure I was going to get this job and I didn't get it. And I remember being really disappointed because I thought I was the most qualified person for this job at the time. They're like, why didn't I get this job? And, but it, um, that when you got the position, it covered like all of your room and board uh -huh. for the entire year. And so I was just looking for another way. What can I do to help pay for school for the next year? And I was walking in the student union and I saw a sign up about the Miss Tech pageant. That was my first title, Miss Louisiana Tech University. Mm -hmm. And the winner would receive a free year. Tuition, room and board, wow. books, everything covered. And I decided I wanted to compete because why not? And sure enough. You know what? I wasn't supposed to win. I have to tell what you. What do you mean? Because the fourth runner up to Miss Louisiana was competing that year mm -hmm. in the competition. It's a closed competition, meaning only girls who go to the school can compete. So everyone thought for sure the fourth runner up to last year's Miss Louisiana is competing for this title. Who's going to beat her? I never won a pageant before in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so no one thought that I was a threat at all to winning this title. But you know what, it just goes to show you work hard and I knew she was competing and I just ran my own race. Good for you. Know, you. Couldn't worry about what anyone else was doing, ran my own race, ended up winning. And to me, for me, when I speak to, to young people, I always talk about the job that I didn't get. Because, you know, in this industry, you go out, you audition, right. you, you do things, you, there are gigs that you don't get, and you're disappointed. But I always talk about that job that I didn't get in the dorm that year yeah. and how I ended up winning and becoming the first black Miss Louisiana Tech University and then that? winning Miss Louisiana, and it changed my entire life. How about that? Well, yeah. That's um, a great lesson right there. Right, yeah. the job you didn't get let on. I mean, talk about being a threat. You wanna wound up being first runner-up in Miss America, no big deal. That's, that's a pretty big one. But then I also, lost. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry, no, no, no. Hold on. We also, but you also became an attorney in New York City, which is a really big deal. Big now, deal. I, I want to know what makes Judge Faith, what makes your show different than the other uh, courtroom shows out today? You know, I th we have a lot of millennials that follow the show, and court is, has really changed because of the way I think people prove their cases. Mm -hmm. Because now these days, and you know because you guys cover this a lot on the show, whenever people have a dispute about something, what do they do? They don't call up their best friend anymore. No. They go on social media. Mm -hmm. And they talk about it on Twitter. They put it on Instagram, everywhere. And so now people come in, and it's all of this evidence. Well, of course she said it, because look at what she posted on Instagram. Right. She didn't There's post my name, now. but you know it was about me. Right. That's what and you so, get when right. you tweet about it. That's what you get. <laughs> We actually have a clip from the show, and okay. I, I can't wait to show you this. Let's okay. take a look. Listen, I, I think it has less to do with the car and more so whatever else you have going on in your life. That, that's my impression, sir. Well, yes, Now, let me look Your at Honor. the... What? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor, it is true. I do have some situations with the wife, the third wife, but... Uh, uh, and you're so cute, Your Honor. I mean, you really see that's that's cute. your problem right no, there. No, I'm that's saying, your problem right there. That's why you 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 up in here looking for wife number four. No, it's not gonna be me. Ooh. It ain't gonna be me. Uh, um, now it's not every day that we get a, a television judge here at HTL, so we're curious if you could help us settle some celebrity disputes. Okay. Okay. I'll so I, I'm gonna present this to you. You give me the opinion of the judge, Judge okay. Faith. Okay. First off, Nia Long on the set of Empire. The reports that she was difficult to work with. Mm -hmm. Hair and makeup filed a complaint against her. Then she threatened to sue the show over quote an improper goodbye. Does she have a case? Probably not. First, I, I think that she, the argument is it was in her contract that she's supposed to have this, this goodbye. I don't think that's in the contract. And even if it is, if you're not properly, if, if you're not told goodbye in a proper way, what yeah. are your damages from mm -hmm. that? Right. It's not a lawsuit. It's frivolous. But these days, people are so litigious. They're always thinking, oh, I have a right to sue just because you've hurt my feelings. And it's not the way the court system works. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. I love that. Come to my house. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about <laughs> your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> he hurt my feelings. <laughs>